Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to extract the contents of a disk image and be able to use it on your real Amiga computer. Uh, because trying to find original Amiga software is becoming fairly difficult. Now the stuff you'll need of course is an Amiga 500 computer, preferably with an external disk drive but you don't have to, it just makes life a lot easier if you do. Uh, a computer running at least Windows XP or later and has a DB9 serial connector on it because you will need that to talk to your Amiga computer. Next thing you need is a female DB9 connector to female DB25 connector. Uh, it has to be a null modem cable so to confirm that is a DB25F to DB9F serial null modem cable. It has to be a null cable because a regular modem cable is wired a bit differently. Now let's go on to how this is set up. Now the first thing to do is to get the DB9 end and plug it into your PC, like so. And the next thing to do is put the other DB25 end into your Amiga computer, which I'm just going to do, excuse my head. There we go, nice and secure. Now you can screw it in if you like, but it doesn't really matter to be honest. Now let's move on, on back to the PC. So you'll need a piece of software called Amiga Explorer, which you can get off the internet pretty easily. Uh, literally just Google it, you'll find it, it's easy enough. Once you've downloaded Amiga Explorer, rather than double click it, you need to right click it and hit Setup. And here we go, this is where we need to start paying attention. And we've just explained all that. Is the Amiga running Workbench 2 or higher of the Amiga OS, the grey Workbench screen? If the Amiga was booted with a 1.2 or 1.3 Workbench disk, please select No. Now, that is where you need to use your initiative. I am using Amiga Workbench 1.3 with the blue Workbench screen. Uh, if you are running uh, Amiga Operating System version 2 uh, with a grey Workbench screen, you need to press Yes. So let's hit No. Please make sure that the please make sure that the Amiga serial preferences are set to the following. Now let's just go and do that. Now I do apologise if the autofocus doesn't cooperate here. I'm sure it won't. So we go to our Amiga disk preferences serial. And in just a moment, there we go. So board rate, 19,200, very good. Uh, buffer size, 4096, that's correct. Read bits, 8. Yep, that's definitely right. Write bits, 8, indeed. Stop bits, 1, yep. Uh, parity, none. And handshaking, RTS, CTS. Okay, once we've got all that set, we just hit OK, and then save. Oh, our industry is very protected. Oh, okay, fair enough, yeah. That, that should be okay anyway, it doesn't matter. That's just because I've right protected my workbench disk. Uh, if you haven't done that, which you really shouldn't do, uh, you should be fine. So I've got all my settings set up correctly. So there we go, let's move on to the next step. <coughs> Alright, so we've confirmed that. On the Amiga, please open a shell or system CLI window and enter exactly, including the word type, type SER to RAM setup and press return on the Amiga and then select OK in this message window. Please do not press any other key or move the mouse on the Amiga until the next message is displayed. Yeah, they're not joking about that. So let's go and type that in. Alright, so let's just go to the Amiga and type that into a shell window. Now what this is basically doing is writing a file that originates, from, well it's going to write a file based off data that comes from the serial port which happens to be an executable program which will help Amiga Explorer. So we need to type type 
ser colon to ram colon setup right and there we go now we're going to hit OK on the computer and now we just have to wait do not touch anything on the Amiga like it says don't even move the mouse <clears throat> because it won't work and that's just about done I won't have to keep talking just for the sake of filler do 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 press control C There we go. Uh, that basically said, uh, control, press Control C. Nothing will happen on the Amiga, and then press OK on there. That's just to cancel a file uh, transfer process. And now we need to run this program that we've copied over to the RAM. So we need to do RAM colon setup. There we go. So we're going to hit OK, and now it's copying some more files over. This is the presumably the executable file that you use to run Amiga Explorer on the Amiga. Of course, you do not have to do this setup every time. Once you've made your Amiga Explorer disk, yeah, you just use that in conjunction with it. You don't have to do all this just to copy one game. This is setting up Amiga Explorer. Yes, now I've forgotten the... What is it to exit? Oh, it's end... Yep. <laughs> NCLI to close the window, because Amiga is very strange. Now, we have to use a blank Amiga formatted floppy disk, and this in future will be our Amiga Explorer disk that we use to copy games. Uh, it's just labelled empty, which is what we want, it's a blank disk, and we go to RAM disk, and there we are, we have Amiga Explorer and readme.txt, and all we have to do is copy Amiga Explorer onto our floppy disk. You can copy the readme.txt file as well, if you so wish, but you really don't have to. Now, this may take a while, so I'm going to do a little video cut here. Nope, I was wrong, it turns out it doesn't take that long. Okay, so we can close this now. We don't need it. All we need is our Amiga Explorer disk. <clears throat> okay, right. Now, we run Amiga Explorer. And that's just confirming that it's made a serial connection, which is always good. What we do next is we take out our Amiga Explorer disk. Uh, once the program is running, you do not need to keep the disk in there and insert a blank disk which we will use to copy our game or demo or whatever. Uh, for this demonstration I'll be using a copy of a demo called Desert Dream which is one of the coolest Amiga demos. The next thing we do is actually double click on Amiga Explorer now and up on this window we get to see all of the drives that are active on our Amiga system. Uh, you also have these here, which are basically ADF files which have been automatically generated based on what's in the drive. So if you want to make a disk image of a real Amiga disk, then this is how you do it. And you just drag it onto your desktop or whatever. Uh, so we can double click on our empty disk and we'll see there's nothing in there but the trash can. And here is uh, at least disk one of Desert Dream in ADF format. It was originally in DFS, which is no oh, um, DMS. Sorry, which is Amiga Disk Masher format. I shall show you how to decompress those shortly after this because it can get very confusing. Uh, so we just all we do to copy it over is drag it onto the 
whichever drive you want. I don't want to overwrite my workbench disk, but I want to overwrite the contents of my empty disk. So we drag it onto there. Are you sure you want to replace the contents of this volume? Yes. And now we should hear the drive ticking away. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> More of a violent growl, but yep, whatever. And this process, believe me, it does not take three minutes. It takes much longer. So I shall cut the film here, and I'll show you when it's done. Once again, I do apologise, I really should be using a screen recorder, but this video is going to take long enough to make, and so I just want to sort of do things a bit more efficiently. So, uh, what I've done here, just while that is still copying the original image, is I'm going to show you how to convert a DMS file to an ADF file. Now, a DMS is basically a compressed disk image. It was for a bit of software called Amiga Disk Masher. Uh, if you've ever encountered a DMG file on a Mac, then this is pretty much the same thing, but for the Amiga and it can be a bit of a pain, if I'm honest. Uh, it does make the small files smaller, but in today's world of megabytes and gigabytes, uh, saving a few hundred K really doesn't matter anymore. But, so we're going to fire up this software called ADF Opus, which you can download off the internet very easily. And I've made a folder on my desktop. Uh, let's just move all this out of the way so we're not too confused by stuff. Uh, yeah, right. I have a folder here called ADF Demo, which inside it I have put the same demo that we're copying to the disk currently, Desert Dream, and this is the original file, it's a DMS file. So in ADF Opus we need to go to Tools, Batch Converter, Source Files, and just locate the file, which I've already done, DesertDream.DMS, open, and we want to output it into an ADF file, not a compressed disk image. Uh, so we're going to extract it basically, and the process is very quick. So we hit start, and there we go, we have an ADF file. And that is what we drag onto the Amiga 500 in real life. <laughs> uh, of course though, if you, if you try and open this ADF file in ADF Opus, because it's a because they used very strange methods back in the day to do these demos, uh, it won't actually be able to read it because it's not formatted for Amiga DOS, it's formatted for whatever they had it for. Even when you put this disc in the Amiga, the Amiga will throw loads of errors at you, so don't worry about that, it, the, the conversion has worked. And you just stick this onto the Amiga. If you try and do that, it won't work. Uh, you'll just have a load of problems. You need to convert to ADF before you, uh, if you've got a DMS file, you have to convert it to ADF. And that Amiga is still copying, so... <laughs> uh, oh well, a nice bit of filler for you, how to decompress a DMS file. Alright, so our copying has finished, and you can see there it says DF1 NDOS, which means it's not an Amiga properly Amiga formatted disk, and it can't really read it, but it can read it when we actually boot off of it. It just workbench doesn't like it, so I'm ejecting all the disks. I'm going to put the disk we made into the internal drive restart it and see if we can see uh, Desert Dream starting up. There we go. And it's just loading up now. So yeah, it is a pretty laborious process to set it up, but once you've made your Amiga Explorer disk, you just insert that, run Amiga Explorer, and then run the program on your PC and drag the disk image over. Uh, it's pretty easy, if I'm honest. And, uh, hey. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial, or at least found it interesting. And, well, have fun reliving your Amiga experiences by downloading any game you like for free. <laughs>
Amiga Workbench. Alright, just the time for it to stop working. <laughs> Alright.